Hello everybody, my name's Tom, back talking about Fun Fantasy. It has been a rough few weeks for me. Um, I'm sure some of you can share in that pain as well. I just can't avoid the disqualifications to be perfectly honest. It's just something that's out of our hands, but there we go. What is on our hands is our team selection going into Monza, so we're gonna have a look at that in this video. So let's get stuck into it. So first of all, we're going to have a quick look at what happened in Zanfort, and it will be a quick look because it's pretty disappointing. I scored a miserly 175 points. I trusted the Mercedes much more than I should have done. You know, in my final thoughts video at the end of end of last week, I was talking up the Mercedes quite a lot. They were talking themselves up quite a lot. They've been consistently really strong, winning the last three of the four races before the summer break. It's just it was just looking so good, and they just really really disappointed. I'm hoping it's just going to be like one of those kind of outlier tracks and coming back into Monza. They have shown some decent straight straight line speed of late as well, which is obviously going to be important in Monza. I'm hoping that Mercedes can come back into it a bit more, but we will have some contingency plan in the team selection video segment. In just a minute. Um, just further thoughts on what happened in Zambor. Alex Albon with the disqualification on the back of getting George Russell disqualified in Spa. Moving out Logan Sargent to avoid that inevitable minus five, it seemed like a good move. And I'm sure a lot of you guys did something similar if you also owned Logan Sargent. And, you know, Sargent ended up on zero points because he got the minus five and then made up five points in the race. So, you know, kind of going, going even there. So moving to Albon only ultimately cost minus two. So he actually had a really good race with five positions gained, eight overtake bonus. But then minus 15 for the, the impossible to predict disqualification. I've been vocal about it on Twitter. X, in my opinion, I do think that the disqualification, minus 15 for quality, minus 25 for the race, it has to go for next year. It has to go. And it's not just me speaking from recent experience, although that's obviously highlighted it, but the fact that it even exists when it's something that as a manager, we cannot predict whatsoever. And the whole point of fantasy is about making these educated predictions and picking the best team based off that. Having this huge disqualification penalty for me is so grating and it's just so punishing for something that you cannot pick. I think it was, what was it? The, the Williams floor was three millimeters too wide or something. They'd done all their scans. Obviously something's gone wrong with, with the Williams scanning because obviously it doesn't line up to what the FIA produced. How on earth are we supposed to put that into our thinking for a team selection? We just cannot and therefore getting punished so heavily Minus 15 on this occasion, it just really hurts. So that's that's kind of all I'm going to say on it. Um, it's pretty clear. I hate I hate the big big penalties where you know even the DNF should be minus 10 in my opinion. But even even so, um, I won't say any more on it other other than I hate it and I wish they'd change it for next year. Um, past that, Guan Yu Zhou on minus two has been dismal for so well the whole season. Just dismal. I don't know if he was carrying damage. I haven't looked into it to be honest. I haven't looked into the reports post race, but I was watching the race and it was just constantly bleed in time, lap on lap, just seconds and seconds lap. I don't know what happened. I'm, I'm assuming he must have got damage or something, but it was just, just he's just been terrible, even without damage. He's been terrible recently. He's not getting those overtakes like he has done in the previous couple of seasons, and he's bleeding value. I mean, I could have gone with Bottas. Uh, it's much of a muchness. I think he's on the chopping block going into Monza. Hulkenberg scraped a 0.5 rise. I think the average this, this week was like 11 points, roughly. Um, so he scrapes into the zero point, I think by a single point, scrapes into the, the 0.5 rise. So it's really nice that he managed to just about achieve that. Um, McLaren obviously doing fantastic. Piastri, a stable 20 points on the two times, but the Mercedes, a big disappointment. Um, yeah, just a big disappointment. And most of the points actually came from, from Hamilton anyway. So yeah, Russell, a big disappointment in general uh, on this occasion. But yeah, we're going to go into, um, into Monza and have a think about what we're going to do there. So this is my team coming out the back end of Zanfor, going into Monza. What am I thinking? I'm thinking, first of all, and for, first and foremost, I'm not going to be like super knee-jerky, super reactionary. Oh my God, Lando Norris scored a bombshell of an amount of points. He has to get in the team, blah, blah, blah. But he has to still be in strong consideration. Going in, going, coming out of the summer break and going into Zanfor, I love this team. Uh, for, for its balance, for its points potential, and also its budget potential. The budget potential didn't really get there. I gained 0 0.7 million, I think, ultimately. Um, and I don't want to be like just jumping jumping off the Mercedes bandwagon all, all together because they have shown consistently good progress. And I do think they'll be stronger in Monza, but we have to take into account how strong the Ferraris were, in my opinion. And the reason for that is because they're very similarly priced. You know, they're just a fraction more, 0 0.9 more than Mercedes. Um, the assets themselves are a little bit more expensive than George Russell. George Russell's kind of on his own little price band himself here. He's kind of separated himself 
uh, up above Alonso, but a good couple of million below the other guys. So George Russell is nice in terms of value, and I still think he's got high potential of, you know, potentially podium or whatever, or potentially getting a random race win like we saw in Spa until the disqualification, of course. So I do think that George Russell isn't just like a sell, sell, sell. I think he's still, we should like keep our heads from spinning here and potentially look to hold him. So I still think he offers good value. But we need to consider the Ferraris because they've been off the menu for several weeks and they didn't expect great things. You know, they were poor for the practice sessions. They didn't look great. And they surprised everyone, including themselves, I think. Um, and I think that the Ferraris certainly do look like they could be for consideration. I can't do the straight swap just in and out because I'm 0.2 short, so I'd have to do some cutting. I'm more than happy to cut Guan Yujo to bring in like the Ferraris potentially. This is just a very hypothetical. I'm not just doing this because I still think Mercedes could still be strong. Um, but then I chop down to poorly Logan Sargent at 4.8. It does mean double Williams, which is potentially painful. But if they can sort out their floor before Monza, if they can trim it down a bit, get that new floor stuck on. I don't know if it's as simple as that, but if it is... They looked okay in Zandvoort during the actual race, and that's with the old the old spec floor. Um, I know they had some other upgrades on the car, which obviously has helped. Um, and I think, you know, historically speaking, they've been good in the straight line. Not quite so strong nowadays, and I don't know how this update is particularly going to affect that. But going double Williams, obviously, if we went double Williams in Zandvoort, it would have been a disaster. And it does make me a bit shaky going double Williams for the very next race. But I'm hoping they could have sorted out their issues. Uh, and this does enable you to get the Ferraris in if they look good. You know, home race for the Ferraris. They look good. And I understand they're bringing some, some big updates as well for Monza. So the Ferraris are big on my radar this week. They've been nowhere to be seen. And suddenly they're back on back on the menu. So I'm certainly very much considering a team like this. Like I said, I'm not overstruck on the double Williams. But everyone else looks good. Piastri on the two times. Um, alternative to that would be to faff around bringing in like signs if the Ferraris look lightning fast then i could look at bringing in carlos signs that would mean i'm sat still with guan yujo i can do that for three moves so it would be a minus 10 because i unfortunately had to burn through my transfers to ditch off sergeant going into zanfor which obviously didn't pay off for unforeseen circumstances so i could do a minus 10 and i would do a minus 10 if the ferraris look like they're absolutely unbelievable going into the monza practice sessions i don't think they're going to be that strong but they are upgrades coming they've looked surprisingly strong in Zanfort and I know Monza is a very different track very low downfalls compared to Zanfort um, but if the Ferraris can continue their, their form that they've suddenly sprouted out of nowhere then I'm certainly interested in this because it still offers a great budget building potential in terms of the Ferrari still less than 25 million Carlos Sainz less than 25 million um, and I think it just looks it looks really strong um, it Ferrari, Ferraris aside, if we want to kind of stick more to the Mercedes, I think it's kind of tough, but I think I'd probably potentially look towards moving into the triple McLaren because as much as I've said the Mercedes, let's not jump off the bandwagon quite so much, quite so quickly. What I will say about Mercedes is they've shown evidence just in Zanfor alone that they're not completely reliable as an asset. I still think they're very strong and I still think they offer very good value and on an average week, they're going to do very well and I think they are fine in our teams. But what McLaren have proven on a consistent basis, ever since their Miami upgrades pretty much, and further upgrades from Zanfor, what the McLarens have really proven is that McLarens are the real deal. They are the fastest car now. So if we want to just commit to that safety aspect of going in on on the McLarens and I can very much get on board of that with a simple um, two switches no need for minus tens it does again mean the double Williams it does mean Logan Sargent again but Sargent hasn't actually done too awfully recently you know he's not getting negative points he hasn't got negative points for a good while I mean, maybe that means he's due I don't know um, but 4.8 million um, like I say last season I'm pretty sore he bottomed out at four and a half million so maybe at worst he can drop another 0 0.3 then he might bottom out I don't know exactly what's going to happen because we haven't seen uh, seen that happen as yet this season so I'm hoping that he can maximize you know just drop out to 4.5 just avoid DNFs and he enables me to get this triple McLaren with the the strength of the Mercedes in there I can't afford any Ferraris because I've already got the bottom well I potentially could actually have a minus well, I'd be minus 20 now if I want to do that yeah I could actually afford it but for me personally it'd be a minus 20 and I don't think the Ferraris are going to be that much stronger than the Mercedes so I think I'm much more interested in probably holding fire, keeping the Mercedes in there, who are also quite unlucky not to get the fastest lap. I think Hamilton could have certainly got it there. Um, and then just keep with Albon in there and go over a team like this. I do like this team. It's not great as great for potential uh, budget building, 
but it does still cover off some um, high value from the Mercedes as well as just getting that trustful triple McLaren who have shown great evidence that they are just the best team right now. Um, still, you know, wasn't the optimal race for Piastri, but we can just move the two times across to Lando Norris, who's slightly more consistent in that term. So this team lets me have a consistent Lando Norris driver of the day bombshell. Um, and then it also kind of sets me up. I know it's a little way away. I think it's another three, four races before the sprints come back, but it is still in my mind about the triple, the triple DRS boost and having a team set up kind of ahead of time for that. I know it's a little bit ahead of time, too, maybe too far ahead of time to think about too much, but having, having this team structure does enable the three times on Norris, the two times on Piastri when the time comes. Um, and also potentially for me personally, I've still got the autopilot to use. So at when the time comes for using the autopilot, then going with a team like this, you know, I think Piastri could very easily outscore Norris on a, on a random weekend. So having an autopilot where it looks particularly shaky, you know, we've got Singapore coming up um, very shortly. In fact, I think it's, is it the race after? Let's have a look. Let's look. Um, yeah. Oh no, we got Baku. We got, okay, Baku and then Singapore, fair enough. Um, oh, we've got F1 Fancy Tools there. Um, yeah, so I do think that being prepared with a team like this could well help out in the two or three races time where we're potentially looking to use chips, but it's not even just about chips, it's about the here and now. And I think this team looks really strong because it does enable you to get the driver of the day, Magnet Lando Norris, who had a phenomenal drive around Zanvor. Again, he, he needs to sort out his starts. He's not very good at starting the race, but the rest of the race went perfectly well. Um, so I do like this. But like I say, I'm not ready yet until I see practice sessions to jump off what I've got. Um, I think if I'm going to stick with what I got, I, what I would do is just get rid of Guan Yu Zhou. I actually trust Sargent more than I trust Guan Yu Zhou. I think Sargent is capable of getting a couple of overtakes. Guan Yu Zhou has shown... The complete opposite of that. He's just been terrible for overtakes. In fact, I don't know what it is across the season. Let's have a quick look. Season overtakes. Um, overtake bonus 35 for Sergeant Guan Yu Zhou across the season. Oops. 34. So yeah, actually, even Sergeant is out overtaking Guan Yu Zhou. So for a, what, 2.1 2 million discount. Uh, Sauber have shown some reliability issues. And I know Sergeant himself is a bit of a liability. We saw what happened in Zanfort, that huge crash, which thankfully he's okay and everything. And they somehow the Williams mechanic got the car out and ready for, for the race the next day. Absolute miracle there. Um, but yeah, I do think Sergeant is still very much a reliability issue, a bit of a liability. But Zhou Guan Yu has just really unimpressed me. He just looks pretty dreadful. Um, so I just want to kind of avoid him, to be honest. And going double Williams, again, a bit painful. Crip my teeth and bear it. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not completely off going to stay with this team structure. I still think it's reliable. Um, we'll see what happens in the practice session if the Mercedes is still looking strong. If the Mercedes are still looking particularly strong, then I'm more than happy to stay at this. If there's any doubt or if the Ferraris look particularly strong, I may move to the Ferrari build. Otherwise, I'm just going to triple up on the McLarens and just forget about it because I'm a bit fed up of just trusting random other assets. And when it's clear that the Mercedes, sorry, clear that the McLarens are the best team, and they are, then it might be time to um, to move on to them and triple up on them. Uh, Sergeant and Guan Yu Zhou unfortunately has to stay in there. That is, that is kind of the, the price I pay with going the triple McLaren, but you know, they're solid, they're good. So I don't know what you guys think. Uh, comments down below on what you think. Do we trust triple McLaren? Do we still stay with this balanced build? Are the Ferraris going to be the real deal coming into Monza? It probably would be quite nice to have a bit of uh, Ferrari coverage going into Monza, but that means obviously for budget of me, 120 million, can't quite afford the likes of Norris or whatever. But um, yeah, are you still going for the balanced appeal? Are you more tempted to get Lando Norris back in there because you're just fed up of him scoring 50 odd points and not having a piece of that pie? My rank personally has been dropping consistently for the last couple of months. It's been painful. I was up around the top couple of thousand. I think I... The highest I got so far this season was within the top 2,000. And now I'm all the way back in 7K, um, which still is a respectable respectable rank, but it's time to get things back on a straight line here. And I'm fed up of bleeding, bleeding rank. I'm fed, fed up of bleeding value. I just want to get back up there and maybe a triple McLaren build is the way to go. I don't know yet. We'll see what the practice sessions say and we'll go from there. So thanks very much for listening and I'll catch you soon. Bye.